Thank you. Lord, I just ask you to fill this church right now with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, come yes. and fill us. Uh, Hebrews seven twenty five. Um, if if I um, if I had to put a title on this, it's hard to title God's Word because He's got so many different names. He's got so many different aspects of who He is. Um, but it's, it, I would say it's the living God. In Hebrews 7, 25, it says, Therefore he is able to save to the uttermost to those who come to God through him, since he is always, he always, he always lives to make intercession for them. Amen. Amen. Always. <clears throat> He's still living. Amen. He's still living. The, the word is not going to die. It's not going to pass away. And the word is him. Yep. It is him. It's the living word. It's part of him. So it's not going to change. Um. We look around and see all the things that are going on around us and we get all discombobulated on things that are going on and we worry about this and we worry about that and, and he's, he's telling us every day, don't worry about it. I've already told you not to worry. Didn't I tell you not to worry? Quit worrying. What are you worried about? Right? But you don't know what I've gone through. Hmm. He doesn't know what we're going through. Yeah, he does. He lived it. He lived it. He was on earth on purpose. He had a purpose for being here. Amen. He had a purpose. He had to live the life that we are going to live. He had to do that. He had to go through all the trials and tribulations that we would have to go through. He had to do that. <coughs> And he's the only one. He's the only one that is ever going to do that for us. He's the only one that could ever have done that for us. We couldn't have done it for ourselves. As much as we like to think so, we couldn't have done that. Uh, I've shared with you before about, you know, when, when you, you, your son's hurting or, and you want to be able to take what they're going through and you can't do it. You can't do it. Um, there's a purpose to why we go through the things we do. We may not know it yet, but we will know it. Ephesians 6.18 Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So our job is to persevere. That's our job. No matter what we're going through, we have to persevere. We have to keep moving forward. We have to keep moving forward. And along with keep moving forward is that we I had a conversation with a contractor this week and we were talking about something and it got brought up and I said, you know, contrary to popular belief is that you can't stay where you're at. You are, are as a living being, a living being, you're living or you're dying. It's one of the two. You're not staying the same. Okay? Um, if you ask the grass, which is a living being, it's a living thing, right? God created it. Right? He created it. Um, he created all things. 
Um, if you ask the grass right now what it's doing, I can guarantee you it's telling you it's dying because it needs some water, right? So it's not staying the same. It's not, it's not just cruising along, right? It's not just, it's not doing that. And neither are we. We aren't doing that. He created us in his image and his image and his likeness is he wants us to be like him, right? And when he created us, he created us to commune with him. To fellowship with him. And when we're not communing and not fellowshipping with him, then we're not doing what we're created to do. And guess what that is? That's a sin. So you've heard me say this before. The closer we get to him, the more, the clo the more we'll find out how much sin we already had in our lives. Because we will figure out that, oh, that was that really hurt him. I'm sorry, Lord. Oh, that really hurt him. Sorry, Lord. But I didn't know that, right? I didn't know that, right? Because I wasn't trying to, to get to that next step, right? I wanted to try to stay the same. Well, you can't do that. Because if you're trying to stay the same, you're dying. Amen. And it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Romans 8.26 Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself, the Spirit Himself, the Spirit Himself, the Spirit Himself, it is a being. It's Him. Right. It's part of Him. The Spirit is part of Him. Makes intercession for us which, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Yes. He's making intercession from you, for you. He does that continually. He loves you. He doesn't want to see you go through anything that will hurt you. But he wants you to draw to him. There is a cost to this walk. There's a cost. It's getting rid of this self, this flesh, right. and walking more in the spirit. Yes. And guess who can't touch you there? Amen. He can't touch you in the spirit. Because you know what he's going to do? He's going to stand in front of you and he goes, oof. You look like Jesus. Because that's what he sees when you're in the Spirit. But when you're not in the Spirit, he can take care of you real quick. Because he can start making you doubt. He can start making you think that you're not saved. He, he can make you start thinking that there's no hope. He can make you start thinking all kinds of things that aren't true because they're lies. Right? right? Yeah. And that's what he's good at is lies, right? So then we start believing those things, right? Those things that are lies. And that pulls us away from where we're supposed to be. Right? Remember I said it's not good for us? It's not good for us, right? So when we get out of the spirit, it's probably usually not good for us. 
right? Because we start thinking, ah, oh, boy, I can handle this situation. I got it, right? I got it all under control. Yeah, oh. probably not. Amen. Probably not. But we can, we can get better at this, right? We can get better at this. Um, I can get better at this every time I stand up here. Father, I'm going to ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to get better at that. Amen. Lord, fill this church with your Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to get better at that. Yeah, right? I want to get better at that. Because when I get better at that, then he can't touch me. Right. He has no power over me. I'm the one that gives him the power. I do. Satan has no power over Jesus Christ. Amen. He has no power over the church but what we give him. Yes. Justin, thank you for your prayer for the country and for the election. We need it. And we need to be reminded of it. There's 100 days. Well, let's make them the best 100 days we've ever had in this country. How about that? Amen. How about doing a change? Amen. How about doing something different? Right? How about speaking well words over somebody? Yes. Right? Let's do that. Let's do that because that's what the church is supposed to do. Amen. That's what the, we're supposed to bring life. Not death. We're supposed to bring life. So we need to speak it forth. Right? So when we catch ourselves doing some of that stuff that's speaking death, we need to stop. We just need to stop and back up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. See, he tells us to keep asking him. Why? Because we leak. <laughs> but if he keeps filling us and he keeps filling us and he keeps filling us, you know, sir, our labor is going to start running over you. It's going to start running over on you. And it's going to start running over on you. It's going to start running over on you. And then yours is going to start running over on somebody else. Right. And then yours is going to start running over on somebody else. Amen. And that's the way it's supposed to work. Yep. Right. right? Yes. Not the misery love company thing. Right. That's, right. that's not the way it's supposed to work. Right. You know, Lori brought up this morning and, and, you know, I said, but complaining's easier. Right? Sure it is. You know why? I'm going to give you the, the easiest solution to that, that, the easiest answer to that question, because it doesn't take any effort. It requires no faith. Doesn't take any effort. Just like quitting. Amen. Quitting doesn't take any effort. It does not. I quit. Whew, boy, that hard. <laughs> right? <laughs> but work, work, yeah. work. Work takes effort. Yes. So if you want to increase your faith, it's going to take effort. Amen. It will do that. You know, we, we had talked about this once before. When you when you, you go to work out or you want to you want to start exercising, you know, the first couple of days you start doing that, your body's gonna tell you, I don't want you to do that anymore. Right? right? Yeah. right. Don't do that anymore. That hurts. Right? Yep. See, even the body wants to tell you to know. Right? <laughs> right? But he's not telling me that. He's not telling me that. Because he's going to give me the power to do what he needs me to do. He will give me the strength yeah. to do what he needs me to do. Yes. He will do that. That's what he said. That was his promise to me, right? All I have to do is believe on his word and, and do his work. Right. Yeah. Amen. 
And I can bet you I'm going to get stronger if I do that. Yes. Amen. I bet you I'm going to get stronger if I do that. Hebrews 4. In the 12th verse. For the word of God is. That's a promise. Yeah. For the word of God is. Living and powerful. The word. Just. Just meditate on those words right now. Meditate on those words. The word of God is living and powerful. And sharper than to any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. And of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. It is living. Amen. It's not dying. It's only dying if you don't follow it. Because you aren't reading it. Right. Or you ain't practicing it. Okay, that's the only way it's dying. That the word hasn't changed. It's just like the Christmas gift underneath the tree. If you don't ever open it up, it's not going to do you any good. Right. You wait all year for that Christmas gift underneath the tree and you don't pick it up. It's not doing you any good. Right. Hallelujah. First Peter one. <clears throat> In the twenty third verse, actually I'll start the twenty second verse. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. That's you, church. That's you. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, the truth is. The word, the word is truth. Mm -hmm. Through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren. See, there's the part that we miss. Sincere love of the brethren. Because everybody's our brethren. Mm -hmm. And that's where we miss it. Right? That's where we miss it. Because we got to love everybody. I know we don't like some of the things we do. They do. Right? I know that, right? And Lori was talking about that in Sunday school this morning. About, you know, our leaders and stuff. But our job is to get rid of that. I don't like somebody because of this. Is to pray and intercess for them. Are you listening? Yeah. You're supposed to pray and intercess for them. Because... They're just like all the other ones that were standing around at the foot of the cross and Jesus looked down and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Things haven't changed a whole lot in 2,000 years. They still don't know what they're doing. They still don't know what they're doing and they need somebody to tell them, right? Right? Love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Amen. Lives and abides. Not just lives. Abiding means it's here. Right? They've taken up shop. Right? If you abide in your house, that's where you are. That's your home. Right? Well, that's him. Yes. Amen. He's taken up shop right here. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you think about that, you... 
you start asking for forgiveness. Lord, I can't believe I've acted the way I have. Mm -hmm. When you're living here. You're living here. The one that wrote this book. The one that hung on that tree. The one that did all the miracles. He's living here inside of me. Amen. And, and never leaves me. Amen. And, I'm, and, I, and I start to think of that. When you really, really think of that. You start saying, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Lord, forgive me for my unbelief, for all the things that I've done and said that I shouldn't have done, right? Yes. You know, there was a time in, in, in when they had the, the Jesus bracelets that had WWJD on them, you know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, it, and it's a great thing, right? I, I think it's a great thing. But it's just like when 9-11 hit. You know, everybody was, was praying, and it lasted about two weeks to a month, you know? And then when President Trump got shot at, everybody was praying, even the other side, because they didn't know what was going to happen. Because they had the same people guarding them that they were guarding them. Okay? And then that lasted about three days. Okay? He has a way to wake you up. But it's up to you to stay awake. Amen. It's up to us to stay awake. Yes. Right? Because we can fall asleep real quick. Mm -hmm. We can fall asleep real quick. And when we fall asleep, somebody gets hurt. Preacher. When the church falls asleep, somebody gets hurt. You have, you have heard a message that I had probably over three years ago. And I'm not down in anybody. Believe me when I say this. I got a word from the Lord that said <clears throat> that when the church is weak, bad things happen. Okay? And I brought up that, that the United States is supposed to be the church. He set it up that way. It's supposed to be the church. And when the United States is weak, guess what happens to the rest of the world? Chaos. It's coming true, people. It's coming true because we're not being the church that we're supposed to be. <clears throat> He's got better for us. He's got better for you. He's got better. It's up to us to go get it. That, that presence right there, right? It's right there waiting on us. We got to go get it. You remember <clears throat> when I talked about, you know, we, we were, we, we, we get so tied up in wanting to see miracles, right? And we got to see one on live on national television. And I kept telling the people at work, or what are we going to do with it? We got to see a miracle. The whole world got to see a miracle. Yeah. The whole world <coughs> got to see a miracle. Everybody knew about it, right? Everybody knew about it. So what are we going to do with it? We going to hide it? He's moving. Could you not see that? He is moving. Right? So we have to decide what we're going to do with it. What is that gift that we're going to... Are we going to just let it lay there? Or are we going to use it? Father, I just ask you to fill me right now. Amen. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Father. You told me to keep asking. Amen. And you told me you'd fill me. Every time I'd ask, you Amen. told me you'd fill me, Father. So I thank you, Father, that you're filling me right now. Amen. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, welcome. And Lord, I just thank you that you're going to do a move in us that we've never seen of you before. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And Lord, I just bless your holy name. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. amen.
Thank you, church.